Well, let's have a cultural exchange with the Republic of Turkey, but it's also an educational exchange. And guess what? The World Affairs Council and their global classroom program brings it to us through Barbara Vandeleur and Jennifer Dunn, two teachers who are going to tell us all about it right here tonight on Public Exposure. I'm Stan Emmert. Barbara, Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. It's good to be here. So you guys had a chance to uh, go over to Turkey to learn a little bit, huh? Yes. Was it fun? Oh, it was amazing. Last summer, I mean, it's, it's hard to believe it was really only a year away. I mean, I keep thinking it was just yesterday still. And you were part of the World Affairs Council uh, Global Classroom Program yes. and the Turkish... And it was sponsored by the Turkish Cultural Foundation. Now, had either of you been to Turkey before? No, no. And you don't mind me asking, neither one of you are, are Turkish? Nope. No. <laughs> okay, no, I good did deal. get asked a couple of times. Did you? Yeah. Oh, the, you're, you sort of look Turkish Texan, well, right? I, yeah, <laughs> Turkish Texan. <laughs> uh, the World Affairs Council website, world-affairs.org. Be sure to go there early and often and learn an awful lot. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Turkey. Uh, the uh, Google Earth has brought us Turkey, and it's uh, actually right there in the middle of two pretty important bodies of water. Is Did you find when you went over there that there was some kind of significance to where Turkey was. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just from our hotel, you could see the um, the shipping lanes from the Black Sea into the Sea of Marmara, which then led uh, then led out. And I mean, every morning there was just like I don't know what 50, 60 ships lined mm -hmm. up waiting to go. I mean, you could just tell it was just such a, you know a center of activity and and commerce. Mm -hmm. So now is is Turkey and the Turks do they consider themselves European or Asian or what? Well, it's pretty complicated, actually, um, you know, just because of the geographical position of the country and that I think that some uh, Turkish people would, um, you know, say, you know, part of Asia, others would, w are actually trying to be a part of the European Union, and so many people saying, this is Turkey, we're our own country, we're our own entity. By the way, I should have done this before, you teach where? Um, I teach AP European History at Franklin High School. And I teach 7th grade Language Arts and Social Studies at Woodward Middle School. Well, congratulations to you both. I think teaching is an absolutely wonderful profession, and I sure am glad that there are great people <laughs> who are so concerned that you will go all the way across the world to uh, bring something back to your students. Let's talk a little bit about the Republic of Turkey itself, some, some facts. Uh, Population-wise, 78 million. Uh, for comparison purposes, the U.S. is 313 million right now. Uh, the average age is 28, pretty young, um, and whereas here in the U.S. the average age is 37. Uh, the life expectancy there surprised me. It was only 72. Here in the United States it's 78, um, but uh, that 72 ranks at 126 in the world, meaning that maybe just maybe the health standards aren't real strong. Did you see that at all? Um. Well, I think in the areas that we were in, um, the the healthcare seemed pretty good, and a couple of us had to visit facilities <laughs> <laughs> for several just travel illnesses. But I, 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 I didn't really notice it. I don't think we were yeah. anywhere where we saw a lot of that. Uh, Ninety-eight, ninety-nine point eight percent Muslim. Uh, question: Here in the United States, a lot of people hear Muslim, and immediately they are afraid. Were you afraid? Uh, absolutely not. Um, and, you know, it was interesting because um, I didn't quite know what to expect. Um, you know, I, uh, Franklin High School actually has a significant Muslim population, so I'm, you know, familiar with uh, Islam and stu students who practice, but to go to a country that is 99% uh, Muslim was a little, you know, wasn't, I wasn't quite sure to what to expect. Um, and it was uh, quite enlightening to, to you know, hear the call to prayer come through the air and not see, pe people didn't necessarily stop to, you know, they just kept going about their day. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that there were plenty of people who did go off to mosque for prayer time, but there were plenty of people who just went about their day. And there were, I mean, there were areas in Istanbul that you would go and you wouldn't even realize you were in a Muslim country, I would say. Really? Because walking down some of the streets, it was like being in any, um, 
Tuscany metropolitan city. And then there were other areas when it was very Muslim. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, driving driving out of, I remember driving out of Istanbul across the bridge right. and looking out over the landscape and just the minarets everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just a constant fixture in the landscape and the skyline. Um, and so that I did see, but there were times when it's like, wow, I don't really feel it. And then as we got further east, when we went into Konya, boy, then we really felt it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was such a, a great experience, though, too, to be able to go into mosques. Um, we went into the very famous Blue Mosque in Istanbul, and um, we were asked to cover our heads, you know, just out of respect. respect. But mm -hmm. no, the, um, you, because you were woman, women, women, yes, right? mm -hmm. um, correct. The, were there men in the group? Yes. yes. They didn't have to cover their heads. No. no. Did they have to grow beards? Oh, okay. <laughs> I won't say that. All right. The average income in Turkey, $12,300, which is 94th in the world, whereas in the United States it's $47,400. And U.S. ranks 10th. And the reason that I just give the comparisons is just for comparison purposes. Um, let's talk a little bit about the World Affairs Council and the Global Classroom. Teach your resources, but specifically about some educational attitudes, whatever, that you may have brought back. Um, for example, on the World Affairs Council's website about the global classroom, there's uh, something about Turkey. Turkey in our world today, a model for democracy in the Muslim Middle East. And that's a question mark. What do your students talk about when they talk about democracy? Well, seventh graders <laughs> are really just in a very different developmental age. Some of them really have a handle on it and mm -hmm. can really describe it for you, and other ones really don't even know how to def how to define it, and it's, it's interesting you say that because we just finished a little a, a small little unit on what is government in relation to the U.S. government compared to Washington State government because we have to teach Washington studies, um, and we just went through the whole democracy and what is it, um, and it was interesting because they they don't know how to define it at first. They really don't know what it is. They're you know they they take it for granted. I would say, mm -hmm. um, you know, just what they get with democracy, what we have in our country with democracy, and I don't think they really have a good understanding. Yeah, in Turkey, what do they feel? What do they have? Well, I, I'm I'm not sure that in the past that my students have had that much exposure to Turkey. But back to the the democracy uh, issue, I think one of my great joys of working at Franklin is that it has an incredibly diverse student population. Um, students ha have migrated themselves, or their parents migrated from countries who had been have left those areas because there is no democracy. And so I think it's interesting to, to have, you know, a wide range of students, some who I think do take democracy for granted and some who absolutely do not. So I think that, um, you know, it's, it's a great learning environment. Um, as far as Turkey, though, I, I kind of felt like it, there was a hole, you know, in, in my curriculum, in the in the, the set curriculum and so that I think it's a good place to to bring up those issues because te technically you know Turkey is a secular democracy and mm -hmm. it's interesting to kind of look at well how does a country that's 99 percent Muslim and yet has a secular constitution how, what does that look like? Well let's go to something as, as to what it looks like because you guys have brought some great pictures back let's go to this picture what is it how does it relate to Turkey in general? Uh, well, this picture is actually taken um, outside of the mausoleum of Ataturk um, in um, Ankara, and it was the changing of the guards. So it was as the guards were moving, and then the, these guards were moving off, and then another set were coming in. So they were just walking past, and the, the actual um, mausoleum is behind this one stone wall. Um, and what's the significance of Ataturk? Um, he is considered the father of modern Turkey. Um, he was the, the the person who um, helped bring about, you know, the the Republic of Turkey in 1923, and then to um, again kind of make all these reforms that were very secular. And, and that brought, was the right. The language brought the language um, into the brought them into the modern, really the modern world mm -hmm. in terms of. I mean, language was a big one. And and it's it, he's really his image is everywhere. You know, you His images everywhere? Yes. So um, statues of Ataturk, photographs of Ataturk. You go in the market and there's ties with Ataturk yeah, yeah. And, and like soccer scarves so with Ataturk. Pretty on revered. Them. Oh. Well, I asked you at the beginning of the show if you felt safe, and, and you said that you did. But this is just from today's news. This is May 26, uh, 2011, but out of the Jerusalem Post. 
there's a Syrian opposition in, in exile plans to meet in Turkey. You might as well get right into it. I mean, there you are in sort of the Middle East, and there you are in Turkey, and of course there's a lot of unrest going on in Syria, and there is a, a group that the Jerusalem Post is talking about is going to meet there in Turkey to go back and, and take back Syria. Did you feel any unrest at all? Um, I think being in, um, we spent most of our time in Istanbul um, and then sometime in Ankara, but I didn't feel that at the time. However, um, you know, we spent several evenings out in Taksim Square and then we found out a couple months after that there was a, a bombing in the very same place that we were enjoying yeah, and some it, nightlife. And and if, well, just yeah, in fact, just today, uh, the report out, this is out of the London Telegraph, there was a Turkey blast uh, rocks Istanbul shopping district, mm -hmm. and I suspect you guys were shopping in, in Istanbul. Yes. Uh, and let's go to the quote. It says, shortly after the attack, uh, Abdullah Ocalan, the, the jailed PKK, that stands for the uh, 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 Kurdish leader, uh, uh, issued a statement saying, June 15th is deadline, either a meaningful negotiation process will begin after June 15th, or a great war will start and all hell will break loose. Let's go to the next quote, though. Islamic and leftist terrorist groups have also been responsible for attacks in the past. It, it may have been difficult for you as, as tourists to feel any of this, but you met Kurds, Yeah, right? Yes, and that was, uh, again, that um, I met many Kurdish people um, in Istanbul and also in Cappadocia and other cities that we toured in, and there were, there were so many people who expressed uh, acceptance and you know felt that they were embraced you know but part of you know there's a there's a bigger question here too which is that there are these extreme leftist militants um, and yet there's that they seem to get all the attention that there's this a large Kurdish population who isn't you know looking to to, to separate um, so it's it's difficult hmm. Let's go to this next picture, fantastic picture. Um, what is it? Um, so this is actually a photograph taken in a caravanserai, which is basically a travel stop, <laughs> like a rest stop, like a rest stop, a, like a along rest stop the, Silk the Silk Road. Road right. um, and so we got to watch a, a dervish performance in one dervish? of these. The dervishes are the Sufi uh, Muslims, and so it's sort of the mystic. Uh, branch of Islam and so you know their costumes have significance but what they do is remove their robes and um, spin and all part of their costumes is very significant like the the um, the, the top their their hat mm -hmm. is the cough the it's, coffin yes. is that right tell me the coffin and then the the cloak is the shroud right um, and then what they do when they when they first start they come out and they 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 kind of chant it's all mm -hmm. very solemn and, and then they start spinning, and they just, the whole performance is just them, they're spinning in this very ethereal manner. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they drop their cloaks, um, they raise one, one hand to the sky, to the heavens, and then one hand down below, and it's kind of like this connection between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all, all very symbolic, um, but it was mesmerizing mm -hmm. watching them. At first I thought I was gonna get bored when, you know, just watching them turn around or, you know, just kind of sitting in there, but it really wasn't, mm -hmm. I was surprised. We're going to take a very short break. We're very fortunate to have with us uh, from the World Affairs Council Global Classroom Program and then the Turkish Cultural uh, Foundation. Is that, is that right, Jennifer? Yes. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Dunn from Franklin High School and Barbara Vandeleur from uh, the Bainbridge Island School District, uh, seventh grade teacher there. And they went to Turkey last summer for the purposes of cultural and, and uh, educational and experiences to bring back to their students. And they're in the process of telling us all about some of the things that they learned. If you want more information about the Global Classroom Program, especially if you're a teacher, go to world-affairs.org, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that a little later. There's another great picture that I just thought was very cool. It was such a great picture that I, I even thought that it may have been a painting, but this was actually somebody on the way to work, so to speak. Well, and this was interesting. We had stopped. We were in Cappadocia, and we were going to those little, um, little, little roadside stands and buying souvenirs and kind of taking a break and whatnot, and I looked over. And I just saw this cart and these women, and uh, our guide had told us, and I'd seen them, I'd seen this, the, the carts like this um, in the bus window also. 
Um, and I was able to zoom in and get a little bit closer, so I was kind of fortunate with that. Um, and I, I believe they were going like, out to the fields to work is what they were doing. But So we're, we're talking about uh, educational experiences, and, and art is, is one of them. Um, so right here, what is this? Oh, that is a, um, an, a vase um, and painted in the Iznik, Iznik style. Um, the Iznik painting is a lot of the blue and the red design. Um, and many of the, the Iznik, the pottery, it, it goes way, way back. And in the Blue Mosque is where they have, I mean, the inside, the interior of the Blue Mosque is called the Blue Mosque because of all the, the blue tiles mm -hmm. that are painted there. And they were all painted in this by Iznik. Hand. By hand. Every by last hand? one of them. Right. Really? Right, yeah. Oh, man, I'm afraid to even touch it. Man. Yeah, and we actually got to go to the, um, where they paint them. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd call it a factory so much as their, their a workshop. workshop. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know they had the kilns there, and the women were there painting them, and so we got to see the whole process. And well, uh, clearly an important part of, of any culture uh, is uh, art, music, and of course food. We're going to be talking <laughs> about food later. And do we have music ready? Let's go to that video, you know, right now as soon as we can. But yeah, tell us what this setting is right here, and what. It Yes, so yeah. this is actually also in Cappadocia, and we were driven up to this carved out uh, church. It was a church. A Christian church in the mountains. And these two um, were, were local uh, performers who agreed to put on this just totally uh, spontaneous performance for our group. Uh, they were friends of our, our guide, Orhan. Um, and we just went up and we listened to this concert. It was just magical. And you had a little flip cam that you did there? Yeah, this but, is my and, little and, flip uh, cam. And actually, we were talking about this before the show. I was amazed that the sound quality was so good. I think it was just the acoustics of being inside a mountain. You were, oh, you were inside a mountain now. <laughs> By the way, the, we, there was a preview of, of something that we're going to be having later there. It just came up just for a second, and we'll save that for later. But the next thing is food. Um, you've got kind of like a picture of a, of a meal that you... <laughs> I mean, this is quite a meal here. Yes. This, um, this meal was amazing. We had been at uh, St. John's Basilica right near Ephesus in that area, and it was really, really, it was incredibly hot. And then we drove up this windy road to this restaurant that this woman, the woman in the picture is the owner of the restaurant, and she cooked, she cooks all of the food. So all of those trays there were everything she cooked, and the tomatoes in the foreground, she had grown in her garden. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, they were so fresh. So what was different about the food there? There is a lot of eggplant. Mm -hmm. it, a it lot of eggplant. Made in every every way you could possibly imagine. Mm. I mean, it was just there's it was every way sautéed mm -hmm. and fried and um, creamed and pureed. Yeah. I mean, it was there's a lot of eggplant. Mm -hmm. So of, of everything you ate, what do you think that the the chef or whoever prepared the food was the most proud of? What dish? Uh, that's hard to say, but I know that that was by far my favorite meal that we had was really? at that restaurant. Um, but uh, it's interesting because I. I'm a vegetarian, so it's, you know, it was a lot of lamb and things, and yet there was tons of, again, vegetable dishes, a lot of eggplant, lots of cheeses. A lot of cheeses, a lot of fresh vegetables fresh, yes. and fresh fruits. That mm -hmm. was really wonderful. So you didn't see a whole lot of people who uh, were um, in famine? No. Be no. Th mm -hmm. This is not a developing country, in other words. Mm -hmm. uh, not to my not, experience. Not that, we, not that we saw. Okay, let's go to this next picture because we're talking about some of the things that you experienced while you were there. This is amazing, amazing picture. What, what is it? What are those things on top? So this is Cappadocia again. So this is the same area in which we went into the, the church that was carved into the mountainside. Um, but these are a very special geographic, sorry, geological formation. Um, they're referred to as fairy chimneys. Fairy chimneys. Um, oh, so these are natural occurrences? Yes, these, these are, are natural. natural occurrences. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, this has some... Uh, some importance in the cinema, is that right? Well, this is, they told us that this was actually the site of the filming of the very, the original Star Wars. I think it was one of the flying scenes when Luke Skywalker was mm -hmm. flying around. Um, and so it was filmed in this area around Cappadocia. And if you actually were there, you would actually go, okay, yeah, that makes sense because of just everything, the way it looked, it looked mm -hmm. really like that. And so then on the other side, they've carved a church inside it, is that it? There's, there's like over, 
500 churches carved. And, and in, in fact, that, there were in there were homes in there as well. Um, and I think it was in the 60s that they did a little bit of a, a relocation uh, process because they due to safety. Safety, right. but yeah. it was amazing to see all of these things carved in. So this is yeah, also another um, church that was carved into. This is an open air museum. So it's mm -hmm. this area that they've sort of designated as a world heritage site. How old is this? I mean, how, how old is the carving? Did, did they tell you? I want to say back to 300. 300s. I want to say yeah. in the 300s. Yeah. yeah. And it was another thing that we got to do, aside from really trying to explore uh, Islam, was look at the, uh, the roots of Christianity through this area, too, because we followed um, in Ephesus the um, first church that was built there by Paul. You know, and so I, I can't recall who built these particular. I don't remember who actually churches. built these, but a lot of, I mean, these were the Christian churches. And, and, and in the and interior, there's, you know. The, yeah, well, you go inside and you can still see the paintings on the walls mm -hmm. and the. the, the Very you know, early Christian still there. imagery. So you have this experience, you, you, and, and with some of these fantastic pictures, and we're, we're going to get to a few more, but you come back and you talk with your students about mm -hmm. it. What's the thing that interests them the most? Especially when we're talking about. You know the Star Wars place. <laughs> well, I think um, just having been there, that you are able to demonstrate some excitement about the place. Um, but I think something like what I was just saying about being in an area that has had so much change, so much cultural influence, um, and to talk about the the, the the just the existence of this. Okay, this this area that was Christian and is you know Muslim and yet the country's secular, and just trying to, you know, figure out well, what is this place that somehow um, doesn't make sense and yet exists. And for me it was, um, well, I brought back candy to give to my kids, <laughs> and so they really liked the candy. Yeah, it was this this really, I should have done teacher. that. Why it was I this, think of it that? was this really um, I just make kind of work. different candy that well, they gave it to us on the bus, and I, I didn't really care for it, but it was really kind of flaky, um, and it looked like... I don't know, just pieces of paper, yeah, but I it was caught, it tasted like cotton, cotton candy, yeah. and my students absolutely loved it. And so I'd say they really liked that. And then the, I guess the other thing that I was really able to bring back, because we do a huge unit on um, yeah. in the spread of Islam, mm -hmm. and so I was able to bring back a lot of, you know, what is Islam, and, and kind of breaking down some stereotypes, because I think, you know, here we get a lot of stereotypical visions, you know, of Islam and Muslims, and so, and Turkey is totally non-stereotypical, like you said, it's so secular, so it's a different view. So to be able to express that, of having seen it firsthand and gone into mosques firsthand and things like that, I think that's what really helped me. Well, speaking of a different view, we've got to go to this next picture because this is amazing. What was happening here? Uh, well, this was a cistern in Istanbul. Okay, which a cistern. Now, I come from the south. A cistern is where water is. And that's yes. exactly. And these are cisterns under the city where they used to store water mm. um, ages ago, um, Roman times, really. And so they used to store water down there. And this is one of the cisterns under the city. And we had wandered in there looking for the more tourist-oriented cistern, um, the Basilica cistern, which actually mm -hmm. still has water in it. Oh. And we wa went into this one by mistake, and they happened to be filming a music video in there. And so, <laughs> and so, but it was. I think it's actually a disco or a restaurant too, because they have this yes. great photo display um, in there. And so we just got to hang out and walk around and listen to the music being played, um, and then get these pictures. And so it was really kind of special. And then after that, we went to the, the real cistern, the mm -hmm. Basilica cistern. Let's talk about the global classroom program itself and, and teacher resources. You've kind of already touched on it when you when you talked about uh, how you brought back to your students um, an historical perspective and perhaps a different perspective of Islam. Um, that's talking about religion and that's kind of probably difficult for some of the students, huh? Well, um, I, again, I, I very, am very fortunate to work in an extremely diverse classroom mm -hmm. where I have the luxury of that's not necessarily a difficulty that we're used to having different perspectives and having um, a forum to, to discuss differences in a very respectful manner. Um, however, I think it's always good for the teacher to model that kind of you know open-mindedness and willingness to explore um, different cultures and different belief systems. And I would say for my um, 
the, as seventh graders, they're just, you know, learning a lot of this. And so for them, it was a true introduction. And so mm -hmm. to be able to introduce it in a way that I think was probably um, much more real um, and for them as opposed to just reading it in the book, I think was really beneficial. You have brought some art. Yes. Yes. This was other. This was another art studio we got to go to. This is a picture. Um, the artwork is called Ibru, which is Turkish um, paper marbling, a uh, water marbling, and the tulip is actually the national flower of Turkey. So that's why the tulip is there. And this actual print was um, done by a. It's a copy of a print done by the um, Turkish Ibru master that we got to go to the studio and actually experience the process and make our own. Hebrew prints also. And some students made some um, some art like this too. Yeah. Let's go to the let's go to the pictures that we actually uh, we have. We've got a couple of students anyway. There yeah, they are. Yeah, <laughs> these are um, my students in my seventh grade classroom and I um, actually um, decided that I wanted to bring it back and get the kids get their hands into Turkey a little bit and let them experience it. So I thought I would do this Hebrew lesson with them. Um, and let them actually do it. And so it was an amazing experience. In one day, we took uh, um, 90 kids through the process of creating their own Ebro designs, hmm. um, which was great. The kids loved it. Um, it we, I was really fortunate. I you know, was able to get a grant to purchase the materials and whatnot. Um, many of the kids came back after school and did more. Um, we probably only have about a minute left in the show, and so we absolutely have to end on a high note, and we're going to end on a high note where you guys were flying yes. a little bit. Um, tell us about the best experience for you. Jennifer, the best oh, experience on the well, trip. Well, oh, <laughs> this has to be one of them. Um, we were taken out on a hot air balloon in Cappadocia, so over the very chimney uh, landscape at 4 in the morning, which was brutal, but beautiful because we watched the sunrise over this incredible landscape and it was just I don't know, it was so moving and so special and that's unique and I just feel so grateful to have been able to do did you did you show your students uh, that video uh, I think they'd be too jealous I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is I'm, what teachers do during the summer <laughs> Barbara, how about for you? what was your what was your best experience you know, in 10 seconds in 10 seconds I don't know if I can name just one um, I mean every time everywhere we went it was in Istanbul and I thought oh this is the best place I've ever been and then mm -hmm. we were down in Ephesus and it's like oh wow this is amazing and, and that's the way we're gonna yeah. leave it go to the World <laughs> Affairs Council website world-affairs.org. We'll see you right here next week on Public Exposure. Take care.